KD Live. What's up, family? If it's your first time checking out the show, let me know what city, what state you're coming in from. If you're outside of the U.S., let me know what country you represent. Throw up your flag. Family, I need you to smash up the likes, smash up the likes, smash up the likes. Also, if you have not done so already on YouTube, there's a little bell next to your subscribe button after you subscribe. Go ahead and hit that thing like so you can get your notifications each time I drop a new video like this. That way you'll be in the loop. Make sure you select all notifications. Otherwise, you may not get any. I am going to let a few hundred of y'all come in, then I'm going in. But in the meantime, in the between time, I'm going to give some shout outs to the early birds. Wu Amon, what's up? Eric Hartwick, BB Rock, Texas Cyclone. Heard that was what? No, actually, it was the Texas Eclipse canceled. Mr. G, Fifth Ward in the building. Miss Marion, what's up? Daryl Carter, Chance Francis, what it do, Niff, Dion Rice, Boogie Down Bronx in the building, Desire, yeah, what's up, Mike Johnson, Kendra Johnson, I see Kevin Brooks in here from Austin, Jeffrey Williams and Ruth Robinson is in the building. Going in, fam, going in. Let me put a pick up of Jonathan up right quick, fam. That's Jonathan in the courtroom. Uh, same courtroom that sentenced him today for an assault that actually occurred, but one that he was not guilty of. Boy, this is a cold, cold game, boy. This is a cold game they be running, family. It's a cold game. Jonathan Majors would not receive any jail time in his assault case. Instead, the judge opted for intervention, intervention for his anger management so that he can be able to restrain himself from beating up invisible people because family. This man committed no crime, but he now has to do the time. Not physical time, but mental time. And they put a jacket on his back. They gave him a record, a criminal record. Jonathan Majors' punishment for the guilty verdict in his assault and harassment charge charges in. So he avoided jail time. He went in on Monday in New York City with his attorney and his girlfriend, Megan Good, by his side. He looked solemn and serious and didn't stop for questions. The judge sentenced him to a one-year intervention program that'll be completed in Los Angeles. As part of his program, he'll have to do 12 months of counseling, one session per week over the course of 52 weeks. The DA's office says if he doesn't comply to the conditions set forth, he could face time behind bars. As you know, Jonathan was facing up to one year behind bars after being accused of roughing up his ex-girlfriend, Grace Jabari, and being convicted on two of four counts, assault and harassment. He was acquitted on two other counts of assault and harassment. Let me show you a picture of 
grace on the stand. That's grace just cried her eyes out after not being assaulted by her boyfriend, her then boyfriend. Just cried her eyes out. Oh, yeah, Lord, he hit me. He was hard. I had a scratch behind my ear. I was devastated. It ruined my life so much so that I went to a birthday party after the assault. Let me show you the night in question, fam. Look toward the middle of the screen. That's Grace. Just in front of Grace trying to make it is booking trying to get away from her. Turning the corner is Jonathan. He takes off running from her after trying to put her back into a ride share vehicle that they had just hopped out of. He was trying to separate himself from her, so he's trying to put her back in the car. So he's pushing her back and trying to shove her back in the car and shut the door, but she refuses to go on about her business. She decides she has to, she just got to get at him. So she breaks away. And at first they're walking, he tried to play it cool, like, hey, yeah, we just walking. But then he just takes off running and she takes off running behind him. He's being pursued. Does this look like somebody in danger? Who, which one looks like they're in most in, in danger? Which one looks to be in danger? Which one of these people looks to be in danger? The one being pursued or the one doing the pursuing? There's another angle. There's another, not an angle, but another picture where he's running, the man is running through the streets of New York City, dashing, running for his life. That's her right there behind the vehicle to the right. She can't catch him, he's too fast. So the judge decides that Jonathan, well, not the judge, but the jury. The jury decides that Jonathan, what they seen, oh man, they seen with their own eyes, the video that the world saw that was supposed to exonerate him because we all saw what we saw, right? Our eyes were not lying to us. We saw the same thing they saw and everybody was like, well, that, that case closed. Not so fast. When they couldn't find anything on him actually punching on her, they said, well, since he pushed her in the car, that's assault. He shoved her back into the car. That's assault. Even though he was trying to get her off of him to protect himself, that's assault. They showed the surveillance footage from the night in question. Whatever happened in the car was unseen, but the jurors were able to view what happened outside of the vehicle. Outside of the vehicle, what they saw, what we saw was Jonathan trying to escape his then girlfriend. At one point, he puts her back in the car before she gave chase down the street. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? He pushed her back into the truck, into the car before she gave chase down the street. Now check this out, fam. She eventually ran into a group of people that she went out with afterwards. 
This is something that Jonathan's team argued, proved she wasn't harmed whatsoever. The next morning, Grace turned up at their home and she appeared to have injuries on herself, which she ultimately attributed to Jonathan. While Jonathan insisted he didn't lay a finger on her that night, the jury convicted him. Now, family, I'm not saying for sure that this happened, but it would not be unbelievable or unconceivable to find out that that woman, her injuries were self-inflicted. Whether she purposely punched on herself or, 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 or scratched herself or whatever, or whether it happened in the midst of him trying to defend himself. It is my opinion that those injuries were self-inflicted and any reasonable people would have assumed the same thing since Jonathan was making such a, a, a valid effort to get away from her. This is the typical misjustice in America for the brother. And look, look at that smirk on her face. That, that picture was taken before the incident, but she just got that look on her face like, <laughs> yeah, I did it. Yeah, I got away with it. <clears throat> got away with something. Yeah, I'm capable of doing something. Yeah, you can interpret that look at like, yeah, no matter how this go, I'm going to be good. I know how to get, I know how to get this W. And the true part about it, fam, is that although I do 1,000% believe that she totally fabricated her side of the story. She's never gonna be held accountable for it, never. What's the likelihood of her doing that to another boyfriend? The man was trying to get away from her over and over and over again. Yet, they figured out a way to convict him of assault. The judge, the judge family sentenced this man to an intervention, a violence intervention program. when he's not violent, when he wasn't violent. Can you imagine like being sentenced to participate in an alcoholic anonymous course when you're not an alcoholic and you don't, you don't even drink? Imagine that. Imagine being sentenced, being mandated to to serve 
some type of community service for drinking and driving, you got to go to Alcoholic Anonymous class. And you ain't never uh, drank any alcohol. You can't even stand alcohol. This is how backwards this country is. Just continues to go backwards over and over and over and over and over again. It's a cold game, fam. Cold game. Going into the comments. Adrian Kyle, what it do? Lamar Matz, what's up? Kim A, what's up? What's up? What's up, Trust Scott? Sean Lunatic in the building. Daddy's daughter. What up? Leslie Bruce. What's up, Sean? Sean said they did the same thing to him. Justin Pickcock, what's up? Dion in the building. Or is that the only one? Dion LeWay. Elliot Lewis. Was that Lady of Silk? Lady of Silk? Jamila Archer, what's up, Jamila? Lawrence Bazaar. La Lawrence Bazaar. That's Bazir. Bazir. Okay. Uh, Lady Justice wear a blindfold for black folks. Nah. Lady Justice got her eyes wide open. Lady Justice see 2020. That's why Lady Justice discriminates based on color. They looking at that color. That's right. You go into these, let me tell you something, fam. You go into these courtrooms Last time I went into a courtroom for a ticket in Harris County, that's Houston, that covers Houston. Fam, I walk into the courtroom and I personally counted, I counted every person that was in there. It was like 125 people or something. mostly Hispanic, I would say probably about a good 70% was Hispanic and 29 point something percent was black. 
one white dude in a city as diverse as Houston. Houston is a melting pot. We got a little bit of everything here. In fact, we got a lot of bit of everything here. So you say, well, well where are the white people at? This looks like a city don't know white people live in. Well, what are white people? What y'all think happened? What y'all think is going on? Yeah. Who out there dumb enough to believe that uh, white people don't commit traffic infractions? Cold game, man. Cold game. Just like when it comes to the arrest. Yes, dudes out in the hood robbing and stealing and walk doing whatever. But it's happening also in the suburbs, uh, suburban neighborhoods. It's happening downtown, everywhere. Every downtown you can think of. Embezzlement, fraud. Ponzi schemes everywhere, all over. It's the Galleria is the richest area in Houston. It's happening in the Galleria. Those people in all of these big banks and stealing, just stealing and stuff all day long. But you don't see the, the, the feds running up in there. You don't see the police putting cuffs on them. And they steal billions oftentimes millions, but they they routinely steal billions. I was watching a show the other day and it was American Greed. 100, this one uh, dude, they was, they was, uh, they had a Ponzi scheme for pre, pre-burial uh, insurance. So you pay for your insurance in advance. I mean, you pay for your death in advance to cover your, your death expenses, your funeral expenses. You pay in advance to this company. That company is supposed to put the company, I mean, that company that you pay, the funeral home that you pay, sends the money and puts it in a trust. Well, the people who was controlling the trust were stealing the money and using it for their personal benefit instead of using the money to invest in legitimate investments. They were pocketing the money and just blowing and buying homes and cars and all kinds of stuff to the tune of $450 million. Dude got popped and the time was, was in, it was 11 years or nine years. I can't remember exactly, but he, it was no 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 year sentence. $450 million and eight, here you go. Now, now you don't do that anymore. They were stealing so much money, fam. He gave his son some money to buy a cemetery in Los Angeles. The son got like six years in prison. That's it. You got people out here ain't stole a fraction, ain't stole nowhere near a million dollars, ain't stole nowhere near a hundred thousand. Some ain't stole nowhere near ten thousand dollars. Ain't and and they doing 30 years. And we can talk about white collar crime all we want, but even with white collar crime, there's a huge racial disparity in sentencing and, and the way that they pursue so-called criminals. I was watching the same show and this black woman was stealing money 
from her clients, she was said she was she had some type of technology. It was some type of app or something. Uh, and she was getting money from investors, some type of medical app, I believe. She was getting money from investors to the tune of three million dollars. Three million dollars. Three million. Not four hundred million, not forty million, not four million. Three million dollars. She taking the money, acting like she using it to invest in the app, and she's actually blowing the money on a lavish life, buying purses and shoes and 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 just living it up, going to the hotels, vacationing, all this kind of stuff, just living it up. She had a girlfriend too. Just blowing the money. They gave that woman 16, 15, 16 years in prison. Just $3 million, just $3 million. The other, the dude that stole the 450 million, he bankrupt people to the to the extent of people were like uh, people had to go back to work. They had to get jobs, go back to work. People couldn't pay for their uh, medical expenses. They couldn't pay for their their uh, their their medicine. You know, their, their prescriptions. They couldn't pay for prescriptions. He just he did he did it. I mean, he got all these. He got like over, I think they said he had like a, it was like over 100,000 victims. America. Yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, yeah, what about, uh, yeah, Brett Favre? Brett Favre was accused of stealing welfare recipients' money. The poorest of the poorest people in Mississippi. Mississippi, the poorest state in the nation. So he's stealing from the poorest people in the nation. The most needy people in the entire nation. He's stealing from. He stole money. He got money given to him that was meant for the poor people in Mississippi. And he diverted the money and used that money to build his daughters, uh, to build a stadium at the school where his daughter played volleyball, his alma mater. He still ain't got the cuffs put on him yet. He ain't been to jail or nothing. He ain't been. A, he, he, they, they haven't even so much as said we're investigating him. Let it let let it have been Warren Moon. Let it have been Cam Newton. Michael Vick. Michael Vick did three years in the penitentiary for fighting dogs. For fighting dogs. Three years in the penitentiary. Some dogs like to fight. You ain't got to give them nothing. You ain't got to encourage them. They just like, they're they going to be ready to fight. They're ready to soon as they see anybody, they want to jump and grab and start biting and everything. Some of them like to fight. I ain't going that far. I mean, I ain't, I'm not going to go as far as saying the dog had a choice. But you catch my drift. If it's dog fighting, fam. And the dude was a star athlete at the time. A star athlete. You can't write that story up. 
a star athlete goes to prison in his prime, is sent to prison in his prime to do, to serve three years in prison for fighting dogs. You got people that fight humans who don't even go to jail for fighting humans. People go to jail. People, people have backyard human fights unsanctioned and don't go to jail. There's a silver lining here that shouldn't even have to be, shouldn't even have to exist in the first place. And that is the fact that Jonathan, for the non-crime that he committed, won't have to do any jail time. I ain't got no problem with that. But I do got a problem with that man being railroaded. Which brings me to somebody else. There's a guy named Donald Trump, your president who should have been in jail. How many felonies, 81 felonies, felony counts or something like that? This is a guy who's actually guilty. Guilty. Why not, if you're going to stretch the law, you're going to stretch your authority, why not stretch it on an uncivilized mutt? And I will be talking about him in another couple of hours, within, within the next two hours. I got something on your boy, Donald Trump. That's right. I will be discussing him within the next two hours. And I will be live. And I'm looking forward to the Donald Trump trolls. That's right. Let me warn y'all, I ain't got no problem with y'all disagreeing with me, but you will not come on my platform and disrespect me. Leslie Bruce. Stacy R, what up? Man, what happened? Where is Miss Jazzy? That's what I need to know. Miss Jazzy is out of pocket. Alfredo Smith. Yeah, this is all, when something like that happens, it's always a situation where somebody high up is looking for some retribution, some type of vengeance or something. Because ain't no way possible somebody that that's high, you know, like Jonathan Majors, the dude was right there, like exploding, like everything going good, all of the big offers, and all of a sudden, here comes this case. Now, typically what happens here is a head honcho, whoever cutting the big checks to him, will make a phone call and let them know, back off. And what happens is, typically, they back off. That's how it go, man. It don't go no other way. That's how it goes. The only time 
they might not make that call is when it's so deep and they got to sacrifice somebody to save themselves. They got to sacrifice you to save themselves, they'll do it. But if you in that good graces and something like this happened, man, keep in mind, family, this ain't nothing but a simple assault against somebody who the, the, the judicial system says that, that who by their actions that they really don't care about women. This country don't care nothing about women. This country don't, all you gotta do is look at the laws, look at how it operates, look at how the lack of protection that women have in this country. This to tell you this country cares nothing about protecting women. The judicial system cares nothing about protecting women. 90% of the rape kits in America go untested. They are sitting in evidence rooms untested. What does that tell you? Stop drinking the Kool-Aid. Unless it's great with legs and chill. But other than that, stop drinking that Kool-Aid, man. Don't work. They trying to act like they so concerned about a woman being assaulted. Women are right now in New York City. There has been an uptick. In fact, I would even say a pandemic of women getting punched in the face at random. Women are getting randomly punched in the face in New York City. And these people don't care nothing about women. If they did, they wouldn't engage in the exploitation of women. Everywhere you look, there would not be the objectification of women. Everywhere you look on the internet, women are being objectified. Obviously, you know, many of them are agreeing to it, but everywhere you look, on the internet, women are being objectified. Look at billboards, women scantily dressed. All the skin shown, billboards, TV, movies. Everywhere you look, strip clubs everywhere in all the major cities, strip clubs all over the place. Strip clubs, strip clubs, strip clubs, strip clubs, strip clubs. Strip clubs. Some of the restaurants, Hooters, Twin Peaks, women busting out the clothes and booty booty, man, all of that stuff is, all of that stuff go together with, and porn. All of this stuff go together, man. It's all interconnected. It's all interconnected with the abuse of women. This country ain't interested in protecting women. That woman was a pawn. Grace Jabari was a pawn. Somebody had a personal vendetta against Jonathan and they used her to get to him. Simple as that. My opinion. My opinion. What's up, Barbara R? Go to internet fam, or especially Instagram. Women on Instagram taking pictures in their drawers, taking video in their drawers. Not just regular women, but celebrities too. Celebrities and professional women showing people they're literally showing their draws. Remember, that used to be a saying, you know, if you're showing your draws, I mean, you're cutting up. You're out of line, you're out of pocket, showing your draws. 
Women are literally on social media showing their draws. Family. I remember a time not, not too long ago. A woman wouldn't even answer the door. A woman wouldn't walk around her house in, in, in her drawers and let people who lived in the house see her in her drawers if it wasn't her mate. I ain't never seen my sister in their drawers, my sisters in their drawers, never. And I lived with them for 18 years, never seen it. A woman wouldn't be caught dead answering the door in her drawers, in her drawers, in her, in her uh, bra. Wouldn't even answer the door, and wouldn't answer a door expect to to a stranger. No, man, you wouldn't see no stuff like that. That wasn't common. Now these women letting the whole world see them in their drawers. They let the whole world. They just open up. The, just turn that thing on, let the whole world see them in their panties, see them, see them, see them in, their, in, in their bra. Sometimes they just take them off. They just take, take everything off and just turn around to the side so you can see the, the eye line of the booty. The eye line of the breast, the sides. So this country don't give a damn about women. And there are a number of women who are participating in that sentiment. They are assisting, they are helping to shape that opinion. You look at some of the clothes, man, you'd be like not too long ago, there was a restaurant in Houston that changed their dress code because women were showing up to eat at a family restaurant with uh, everything hanging out, rust hanging out, sheer clothes on, nothing but the middle covered everything else out they were showing up you know in this type of stuff and they passed the dress code and do you know some people got mad about that i ain't never going there again I you ain't going there for a dress code i don't mind dress codes i really don't i don't mind dress codes and if i'm not uh uh, dressed appropriately, I just go switch it up. As long as I know it ain't no funny business going on with the dress code where they picking and choosing. But other than that, I ain't got no problem. You know? Dress codes introduce structure. I ain't got no problem with that. That should be a dress code for every occasion. Any place that you want to go, that should be a dress code. I ain't got no problem with it. But yeah, these women were just coming in, just, just and they still doing it in some places. You can you can go and just everything just hanging out a lot. Uh, when I was coming up, you know, if a woman was caught in something like that, we automatically assumed she was a prostitute, and almost always she was a prostitute. You know, that's like one of the easiest ways you could tell, you know, the, the, the women, you know, the respect, respectable women would separate themselves from the prostitutes. They wouldn't dress like a prostitute. Am I making sense?
Leslie, Bruce, Shava. What's up, Shava? MacArthur Williams II. What's up? What's up? All right, fam, I got to shut it down because uh, I got to make some moves and then come back and get ready for this Donald Trump live. I'm going live on Donald Trump uh, somewhere between 2 and 3 o'clock. I will be getting at your boy. You dig what I'm saying? Appreciate y'all for joining the live, fam. Until next time, no more talk.